Frequency response means finding the steady state response of a system to a sinusoidal input at some input frequency, such as omega that we see here. And we've already been working on this. Uh, th for this system, you would have a transfer function 4 over s squared plus 2s plus 2, and then we would plug in s equals j omega, and we would find the magnitude and the phase of that system. But what we want to do next is be able to uh, find the same thing except with a minimum of calculation. And we want to be able to sketch m and phi very quickly as a function of omega. Today we're going to look into how to do that for first and second order systems. And then later on, we're going to examine any system. A summary of the procedure goes like this. For a first order system, we need to find the corner frequency, which in this case is just omega is equal to a. And for a second order system, the corner frequency is actually omega n. So that's the first step is to find the corner frequency. And then we want to look at what happens for low and high frequency behaviors. We're talking about asymptotes that occur uh, very much uh, below the corner frequency or very much above the corner frequency. And then we're going to plot the magnitude on a log-log plot, log magnitude versus log frequency. And essentially, these asymptotes are going to appear as straight lines on that plot. Then we're going to plot the phase, where we're going to plot the phase itself linearly, but still against log frequency. And again, we're going to get, end up with a bunch of straight lines. And then finally, we're going to sh smooth out the corners uh, in the transition zone about plus or minus one order magnitude from the corner. Let's take a look at this example, which is a transfer function 10 over s plus 10. It's first order. There's a corner at 10, and for low frequencies, much less than 10, you can imagine plugging in s equals j omega, uh, where you're plugging in a very small number. And so this is just going to be pretty close to 1 with an angle of 0 degrees. And then for very high frequencies, we would be plugging in s equals j omega, for, where this is a very large number. And so m angle phi would be close to 10 over omega in magnitude with a phase of about negative 90 degrees. Our next job is to plot a set of axes. And we want to plot m versus omega on log axes, where for omega, we're going to center everything around our corner frequency of 10 and maybe go a couple orders of magnitude above and below uh, just so that we have a large range of frequencies. So we're plotting omega in radians per second here. And m, we're going to plot uh, starting at a magnitude of 1. And then we'll go a couple orders of magnitude below that just to see uh, what the behavior is going to be. Similarly, we're going to plot phi sharing a similar set of axes. So we're going to have 10, 100, 1,000, 1, and 0.1. And for phi, we have one value at 0 degrees, and then we have another asymptote at negative 90 degrees. Now we're ready to plot m and phi, where, again, remember we said that we had very low frequency behavior close to 1 up until the corner. And then once we hit the corner, we're uh, going to look at what the high frequency behavior is going to be. And that's just going to be 10 over omega, which if you notice, if you plug in 10 here, that's just going to give us a magnitude of 1. And for each order of magnitude change in omega, we're going to have a similar order of magnitude change in m. So what we're plotting here are asymptotes of the low and high frequency behavior. Similarly, for low frequencies, we have a phase of about uh, 0. And then that changes to about negative 90 degrees for frequencies above 10. Next question is, what's the behavior for the transition zone, which is numbers that are fairly close to 10, say plus or minus 1 order of magnitude? Next, we can examine the behavior, uh, the actual behavior, which is going to be very close to the asymptotes for frequencies up to about the order of mag an order of magnitude away from the corner frequency. And then it's going to s smoothly segue towards the other asymptote. Again, the transition zone is going to be plus or minus uh, about an order of magnitude here. So you have one curve for low frequencies. Uh, then you have this transition. And then you have the other asymptote. 
Same thing goes for phi, where we're going to have one behavior at very low frequencies. We're going to transition towards the asymptote for the high frequency behavior. And in this case, we're switching between 0 degrees and negative 90 degrees. If you're curious, the value of m right here is going to be 1 over square root of 2. And then the value of the phase right here is going to be negative 45 degrees. Rather than contend with my terrible handwriting, here's a computer-generated plot of the same thing. Again, m versus omega and phi versus omega. One difference here is that, especially when we plot on a computer, it's customary to plot m in units of decibels, or dB where decibels are defined as uh, 20 times log base 10 of the value of m. And if we actually use the real units, 0 dB would correspond to a magnitude of 1 because the log of 1 is 0. And then negative 20 dB corresponds to 0.1 and negative 40 dB to 0.01. Rather than talk in detail about second order systems, we're just going to summarize what we've said already and point out the differences between first and second order systems. First of all, the corner for first order systems is at a frequency of A, and for second order systems, the corner occurs at a frequency of omega n. Here we're just using generic transfer functions, A over S plus A, and using zeta and omega n for our second order system. The low frequency asymptotic behavior is actually the same for both low and uh, for first and second order systems, where essentially we have a magnitude of 1 and an angle of 0 for both. And so the, as the asymptotes that we sketch for those are just going to be straight lines with a slope of 0 uh, because it's just a unity uh, magnitude. Second, the high frequency behavior we said was uh, going to be 1 over omega for a first order system with an a phase of negative 90 degrees at high frequencies. And uh, this, on a log-log plot, ends up being a straight line with a slope of minus 1. For second-order systems, it's very similar, except that there's going to be a slope of minus 2. And that's because the squared s, when you plug in s equals j omega, that's going to dominate this system. And so you're going to have 1 over omega squared. And then similarly, you have double the phase. So you have negative 180 degrees and you have omega squared. Those are the main differences from uh, what you see for first order systems. So we sketched the magnitude and the phase on log log and linear log plots. And then we talked about how to smooth the corners within plus or minus one order of magnitude of the corner frequency. We're going to discuss this later because for second order systems, uh, the transition is actually going to depend a little bit on zeta. Finally, we introduced the concept of decibels, which are just another way that we often label the uh, magnitude axis on our log-log plots, where dB are defined as 20 times log 10 of m.